while you're standing, turn with me to the book of Genesis, the 37th chapter. Oh my God, I feel good about this series that I'm getting ready to start. I think it's time. It's very timely, very timely, very timely. Uh, familiar scriptures, Genesis 37, verse number 36. And then we're going to turn to Genesis 39, 1 through 6. When you have it, say amen. amen. That's Genesis 37, verse 36. I have to do it. Pastor Dr. Jeff Wolf say, turn on your iPads or turn on your iPhones. I used to always wonder why people was in there looking at their phones, but Pastor Jeff made me understand, uh, Pastor, not everybody's looking at their phone. Some people have their Bible on their phone. Never remove yourself from being trainable. So I told Pastor Jeff, I don't know why they don't bother you, but it bothered me when people be on their phone. He said, hold up, son. We teach you something. He did. And he's probably looking. He said, everybody's not on their phone on Facebook. Some is, if that's you, you just got convicted. But there's others that's on their iPads and on their iPhones, or their smartphone. I'm an iPhone, not a smartphone guy. But they are looking at the scriptures. And so I said, okay. So I had to begin to ask God to forgive me, my God, about people looking down at their phone. Because I was always assuming that, assuming, assuming it. It's dangerous. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Always assuming something. That's what I get for assuming. But thank God I had a man of God that loved me enough to say, no, son. Ah, thank God I had, let me say this again. Thank God I had a man of God that I was submitted to to say, no, son. So you don't shout about the assuming. Shout about, I had a man of God that I'm submitted to to say, son. That's the, we'll shout about son. Submitted. Shout about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's my personality. So turn on your phone, turn on your iPad, and open up your constitution. I'm trying to get this millennial verbiage that Bishop taught us, but I'm a dinosaur and I like to open up my dinosaur Bible. So if you have Genesis 37, verse 36, come on, say amen one more time. And the word of God reads, Meanwhile, the Midianite traders arrived in Egypt where they said, where they sold Joseph to Potiphar, an, offer, an officer of Pharaoh, the king of Egypt. Potiphar was the captain of the palace guard. That means he was the warden. Some of us know about that. Verse, I mean, chapter 39, 1 through 6 says, When Joseph was taken to Egypt, somebody say Egypt. By the Ishmaelite traders, he was purchased by Potiphar, an Egyptian officer. Potiphar was captain of the guard for, uh, 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 for Pharaoh, the king of Egypt. The Lord was with Joseph. Uh, so he succeeded in everything he did because the Lord was with him. Not because he was gifted, not because he was educated, not because he had 50 degrees, because the Lord was with Joseph and everything he did as he served the served in the home of the Egyptian master Potiphar noticed this see people take notice when the hand of the Lord and favors on your life Potiphar noticed this and realized that the Lord was with Joseph giving him success in everything he did can I tell you when the blessings of the Lord is on your life it breeds jealousy everybody ain't happy for you because you got the success going on in your life and usually those my God is envious and jealous you are closest to you it's Bible I'm finna prove it to you <laughs> yeah, it's Bible I'm finna prove it to you mm -hmm. yes Lord verse 4 says this pleased Potiphar as he soon made Joseph his personal attendant see promotion comes from the Lord you ain't gotta do nothing just be who you are cause if it's your spot and if it's your time You ain't got to hate on nobody, just walk. Just be who you are. That's all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, just because some of us want somebody else's spot, but you ain't got the capacity to handle that spot. Yeah, oh my God, let me leave that alone. He put him in charge of his entire household, everything he owned. From the day Joseph was put in charge of his master's household, listen to this, leaders. The day he was put in charge of his master's household and property, the Lord began to bless. Potiphar's house. God has brought some of you here to bless going off of Christ church. 
and I welcome you. My God. All his household affairs ran smoothly and his crops and livestock flourished just because God had the right person at the right time in the right place. <laughs> mm, 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 mm. Verse 6 says, So Potiphar gave Joseph complete administrative responsibility over everything he owned. With Joseph there, he did not worry about a thing except what kind of food he was going to eat. Can I just add, I just want to read this one little part right here because I, I want to make you laugh. It says, Joseph was very handsome and well built. <laughs> Lord, I thank you for the freedom to be a blessing to your people. I understand by the Spirit, Father God, that there are some, if not many, are troubled. So I pray that you give them personal revelation from this message, Lord, to encourage them along the way. Give them greater understanding about the things that they may be experiencing under the sound of my voice, Lord. Everything ain't the devil. Oh, my God. So, Father God, I pray that you release me as I bring you to the people and bring the people to you, Father God. And then get me out of the way so that you can do what you will. In Jesus' name I pray. Come on and say amen. amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Mm. I need us to think about this guy. I can identify and preach Joseph's uh, story many times over because my story is a lot like Joseph's. Uh, on his way to where I'm at today, I had, to ha I had some pit stops. I had some places I had to go. I had to have some encounters. I had to wrestle with God. I had to go through some training. I had to learn from some mistakes. I had a whole lot of stuff going on. My God, on my way to where I'm at, as I teach y'all and have told y'all, even though you see me up here by myself, there's a whole lot of people standing up here with me that God has brought into my life, good, bad, or indifferent, to prepare me for where I'm going in life. Don't you know that even uh, we shout about it, but God will allow the enemies, uh, the Sambalich and the Tobias, to prepare you for your journey. Come on, somebody. Stay with me now. I'm heavy now. Come on, stay with me now. My God, God will use Sambalich and Tobias to prepare you for your journey. St. Ballard was enemy to the progress. St. Ballard and Tobiah was enemy. Read the book of Nehemiah to the progress. They was envious and jealous of what Nehemiah and God had called him to do. And so therefore, on your way in life, you're going to have ups and downs and highs and lows. I want to attempt to teach you today, my God, uh, about some of those journeys. I mean, some of those uh, situations and circumstances that you're going to have. So I want you to go with me into the story as I try to bring the story to you and make it revelatory for today. Try to put yourself into Joseph's shoes just for a moment, y'all. Many of you, how many of y'all are familiar with the story of Joseph? So I don't have to do it. Okay, that's a lot of people. Come on, Joseph, let me see your hands over here. Okay, all these, yeah, I mean. Try to put yourself in Joseph's shoes for a moment. You are 17 years old, my God. You are the favored son in a family of 12. Your father has chosen you to be the head of the family. But he was the baby, but he was chosen to be the head. See, right there, God is going against the culture, the Jewish culture right there. Because usually the, the, the eldest son is the heir to the throne. But God switched. Woo. My God. Boy, God be speaking, champ. Hold on. Get your pen, son. My God. Uh, you're the head of the family and he has given you a beautiful robe to sim symbolize this fact. You are on the path, talking about Joseph, to power, influence, and prominence in the family. Are y'all with me so far? Then in a moment of time, everything is gone. Everybody snap your fingers. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. You could be up. One second and down the next. That's why you better thank God that you got breath in your body. You better... I won't get it back if I turn it over, so I'm going to obey. Oh, my God. In a moment of time, everything was gone. You are stripped of your coat. Mm. You are betrayed by people who should have loved you. I'm going to take my time. You are separated from your father. You are sold as a slave and carried off into a strange land. See, all that sound, ooh, ah, ooh, but it's purpose. The oohs and the owls and why they do him like that and why they, uh, 
they didn't do them like that. God did it right there. Oh my gosh, they with me. On the surface, it seemed that, that, that these circumstances could not, could not have been worse for the young Joseph. In reality, those difficult days were stepping stones along the path to God's greater, I mean to Joseph's greater glory. Mm -hmm. Stepping stones. The very thing that we say, oh, they, he was separate, he was betrayed, he was sold, he was thrown in a pit, and we, oh, oh, oh. But that's purpose in that. Oh, I'm going to take my time and teach you. It's purpose in the very thing that you're angry about right now. The very thing that got you. It's purpose in it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. It may have seen that all of Joseph's dreams have been shattered, but God, but God who gave the dreams in the first place was working behind the scenes to ensure that, my God, that, that they would all be fulfilled. I want to join Joseph right now in this story in the early days of him being in slavery. So the title of this sermon is Embracing Your In-Betweens. So Pastor Dean was in the Nassau Bahamas and he brought me back, back, uh, back a book by, the, by from the Bishop Ellis, my God, amen, which is uh, Gia's and uh, uh, Lisa's uh, pastor back home, my God, in, in the Bahamas, my God. And I would begin to read. I said, ooh, that's right where the church is at. Not this church, but all church. We're in that in-between and we have to learn how to adjust and adapt to the in-between seasons. So again, look at your neighbor and say embrace. You're in between. And so God gave me a vision. Come here right quick, Sherrod. When you think about, be careful because my mic, but when you think about, embrace me. That means that everything, if my breath stinks, he got to embrace it. If I got sleep in my eye, he got to embrace it. If I got a boogie in my nose, I'm going somewhere, he got to embrace it. See what I'm trying to say? Embrace your in-betweens. There's some things, my God, that you have chose to keep hands off that you need to be embracing. There are certain trials or tribulations, my God, that you, are, that you have decided that you're going to keep hands off and you don't want to go through it, but you should be embracing because, because it has significant purpose on where you're going. I'm finna go somewhere, I promise you. Mm -hmm. Oh, let me give you this right quick, my God. Assignments, assignments, assignments often come with limited information. Mm -hmm. Oh, as I taught you, as I taught you, as I taught you. Okay, 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 Pastor Champ, I need you right there. Come on, I need you right there. Let me go back to this. I'm going to lay this and I'm going to move. Uh, that's destiny. That's destiny. That's going to be there. Before God even created you, he created that. But what God did not tell us, that Bishop Ellis made me understand that there is, my God, uh, a journey to that right there. Joseph had a dream. That his brothers would bow down to him, that he would be in charge and so forth to bring context to the story. Oh, my God. He had that dream, and when he told it to his brothers, they hated on him. When he told it to his father, his, his father scolded him, but he kept the matter in his heart. Come on, he began to think, my God. But he had a powerful dream that led to prominence. God gave revelation to him, my God, and it, it led to prominence, my God. But what God did not tell the great young Joseph, who was 17 years old, that even though you're going to be second in command of the most powerful nation in the country, my God, I can't let you know what you got to go through before you get there. You may be seated, Pastor. So I want you to always remember destiny. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Let me lay this. This is destiny, so Pastor don't have to stand. That's destiny. You trying to get there. That's already there waiting on you, but there's a series of events that got to take place before you get there. And if you don't learn how to embrace what's got to go, what you got to deal with on your way there, oh my God, you might not never make it there. Some people die before they ever, my God, fulfill destiny. Uh, some people tap out and quit before they ever get to destiny. Oh my, some people turn it back and go back to Egypt before they ever get to freedom. Come on, somebody. So look at your neighbor again as we get ready to move to point number one, say embrace the in-between. In Hallelujah. So let's look at how God prepared him for where he was taking him. First, he protected him. Point number one, God's protected of him. As I stated, it seemed that all have fallen apart for Joseph. Mm -hmm. We pick it up the story now that he's, in, he, he's going through a, a series of trials now. But if we examine the facts, it became clear though. My God, that Joseph was in the hand of divine providence. Let's consider this. I'm going to give you a little scripture, my God. Turn with me to Genesis chapter 21, 37. I'm sorry, verse 21, 37, 21. 
it says, but Reuben heard of their scheme. He came to Joseph, Reuben is Joseph's brother, to rescue. He came to Joseph to rescue, and he says, let's not kill him, he said. Why should we shed any blood? Let's just throw him into this empty citron. I like to use the word pit here in the wilderness. Then he'll die without our laying a hand on him. Reuben was secretly, watch the scripture now, this is his brother, secretly planning to rescue Joseph and return him to his father. Now jump down, my God, to verse number uh, uh, 26. It says Judah, Judah means praise, by the way. Judah said to his brothers, what will we gain by killing our brother? We'd have to cover up the crime. So there's two of God, uh, two of Joseph's brothers already plotting, my God, in their minds how they're going to rescue Joseph. So even though Joseph is dealing with a bad situation to the natural, God is using his, the same people that sold him into slavery to prepare him, my God, for where he was going. Look at verse number 30, uh, 37, 28. It says, 37, 20, it says, uh, let me get it. It says, so when the Ishmaelites who were Midianite traders came by, Joseph's brothers pulled him up out of the citron, I'm going to use pit, and sold him to them for 20 pieces of silver. And the traders took him to Egypt. Now, if you understand the story of Joseph, let me bring up my Bible scholars. My God, we know that Joseph became second in command of Egypt. And so, my God, he was sold, my God, he was put in a pit, and then the right people at the right time, oh, this is heavy, Janice, my God, I got to labor for a minute. The right people at the right time, uh, he couldn't just be sold to anybody because he would have been out of the will of God. He couldn't just, couldn't just know anybody say, oh, I want him, my God, no, no, no. It was specific people at a specific time, my God, that God had in place that came by and said, I want him because he's, he's young and he's handsome. So he sold him to the Israelites, and they took him to purpose. Pacific people at the Pacific time, my God, took Joseph to purpose, Egypt. I'm going somewhere. Just stay with me. Just stay with me. Just stay with me. Stay with me. So what you complaining about, how do you know it's not purpose? What you mad about, how do you know it's not purpose? The trials you're going through, the heartaches you're going through, how do you know it's not part of the purpose? Somebody do like this. You got to learn how to embrace some stuff. That's why you got to be able to follow God when you, uh, you when you don't, when you, when you, you got to follow him when you can't trace him, my God. Oh, so Joseph was sold, my God, to the right people. And they was, oh my God. See, Joseph didn't have to catch no camel or nothing. He was sold and the people put him in the chariot sun and took him. Right to purpose. See, God makes things easy. That's why I tell y'all it's good on this side, my God. They just carried him right on to his purpose, Pastor. Are y'all with me so far? Oh, I'm finna get going. Let's go a little deeper right quick. My God, the fact that Joseph was, the fact that he was sold to Potiphar, he was like, he was like the, he was like the head of Pharaoh's, my God, my God, my God, secret service. He was responsible, talking about uh, Potiphar, for protecting his boss and dealing with those who, who dared to attack Pharaoh. Pharaoh, by virtue of his position, would have been in contact with many other dignitaries and political officials of Egypt. Now, keep in mind, Pharaoh, who's sitting, who's, who, who's over the, the, the security of the kingdom, God, he was the Hebrew one came back, bought Joseph. He has an ear to the king. When he come in, the king got to listen. I, I got to teach y'all. Uh, he, he got to listen because this is his right-hand man. Okay? So, so his brothers tried to save him, my God. Okay? He was sold to, Is to, 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 to Potiphar. And now Potiphar, my God, got the ear of the king. Y'all with me? So when we looking at poor Joseph, 17 years old, he was slow. He was, he was sold, my God. He, 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 he was mistreated by his brothers and all that. And we can feel sorry in our humanness, my God, for the young man of God. But I want you to know, my God, that all that Joseph is going to up until the time right now is all of God's divine providence. And so now he's sitting with Pharaoh. Pharaoh has the ear. Pharaoh knows all the powerful people mm, in Egypt. Mm. It is not outside of the realm of possibility that Joseph would have been introduced to many of the influential people who would later serve him. Because Pharaoh knew all of them. He hung out with them. He ate with them. He kicked it with them, making our verbs, my God. So they don't know that this slave that they may be overlooking is supposed to be their See, God know how to reverse. He up under them, but it's going to come a time where that was 
They're going to be up. He up under them, but it's going to be a time where they begin up. He's up under them, but they finna come up under him. See, there's some things on top of your life right now. If you just stay with God, he's going to shift. He's going to revert. That one was on top of you. going to get up under you. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. Oh, my God. That one is on top of you. Get up under you if you just keep on with God. Oh, y'all need to stay with me, baby. I feel like teaching. Oh, catch the principles, catch the principles, catch the principles. Oh, my God. He up under them right now, but it's just a matter of time where they're going to be up under him. Oh, my God. That one is on top of you. It's going to get up under you if you follow the principles, if you do it God's way, if you quit trying to do it your way, if you quit getting bitter, quit getting angry, quit giving up. My God. Quit stepping down and all of those stuff. Just stay in the race, and I promise you, you're going to be victorious. You got to give God time to work, baby. You got to give God. Yeah, God need time to work. Yes, he can do anything at all times. My God, but he need time to work. Because guess what? While God is working, he's building your trust. While God is working, he's building your faith. Come on, somebody. So you got to give God time to work, baby. You're too impatient. We don't want to wait for nothing. And I know I'm guilty. My wife said, boy, you are so impatient. Here we, oh, I'm driving off and going around the corner. I'd rather drive around the corner so and wait on you. It took more time to drive around the corner. I should have sat still. I want y'all to see this, amen. The setup, how God gave him favor with Potiphar. Potiphar knew the right people who did business inside of Pharaoh's kingdom. Divine connection. I don't want to mess with that because my life is full of Joseph. I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for a whole lot of people. Divine, right connection. That's why I had to keep my mind made up. That it ain't no shadow of turning. God gave me that in prison. I'm going on to see what the end of it. And if I would have came out of prison, my God, playing, my God, not going hard for God, I would have missed who I am today. My God, playing, my God, trying to, mm, but I thank God for divine connections. You just never know who God is getting ready to bring, ac bring across your path. That as I teach y'all, that has a key to your next that has something to deposit into you that you need, my God. Oh, that's why it's good to stay, my God, submitted and committed, my God, to God. Come on, somebody. That's why it's good to stay submitted. No, I said submitted, my God, because you won't commit if you ain't submitted. You got to submit and then commit, my God, because God has plans. It's God's good will to bless you. That's Bible. But many of us, my God, in the in-betweens, we get discouraged, we get frustrated. But one thing about I'm learning about the young Joseph, my God. Joseph stayed steady. I'm going somewhere. He stayed steady, my God. And God is working this thing out. He's meeting all the right people. Now, he's just 17, 18 years old. But now he's sitting with kings and queens already. Come on, somebody. And he's locked up as a slave. I can't get nobody to say that. Ooh, look at God. Gave him favor even as a slave. He sit with people that people in the kingdom never got to sit with. They got to the see passing by. But Joseph was sitting right there with him. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah, that's real talk, Sharon Joseph. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God set everything up just like he needed to be so that Joseph can arrive exactly where he needed to be at the exact moment. That's critical. Write that down. Exactly where at the exact moment. See, don't you know, when we don't understand or we mishandle or we squander away opportunities that God has brought to our lives, it can get us out of, it can get us out of season. It can get us out of rhythm. We can get out of position because we saying, okay, this must not be God. I've been tithing. I've been coming to church. I've been, I've been, I've, 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 I've been faithful. I've been whatever you want to put on it. And so why am I going through all this type of stuff? And so then we start trying to create Ishmael's. We start trying to make things happen because we begin to tell ourselves, this can't be God. I, I'm in a good flow right now. I ain't looking at this stuff and that stuff. I got my babies in there. I ain't looking at this and that. I ain't doing this and that. I was doing that. Now I stopped doing that. So we can't begin to fathom that. Why am I going through this? And so therefore, we're still trying to take our life into our own hand. And you can get out of time and you can get out there. You won't be where you're supposed to be when you're supposed to be there. You feel like God is taking too long. Don't get ahead of God. Stay in rhythm. Stay in rhythm. Stay in rhythm with God. Stay in rhythm with God. Trust God. God is trying to build your foundation because where he's taking your destiny is still waiting on you, but all of us ain't ready, including me. We ain't ready for the full manifestation of the glory of God on your life. That's why you got to teach us. It's called the lessons we learn along the way. On the way to destiny, God is teaching you something. And I have to be honest, I quoted this from, from, from Bishop Ellis. Write this down. My God, in between season, God is trying to teach you about him. See, a lot of us know of him, but we don't know him. We know about uh, we know about God. Uh, we know what our grandma told us. We know what the Baptist church told us. Or we know what this. But do you know Him for yourself? 
So in between seasons, my God, in between on your way to your destiny, God want to teach you some, th some, some things about him. Write this down too. He, he want to teach you how to relate to him. Many of us don't know how to come in at the presence of the Lord. We come into the sanctuary, my God, and we think that this is the club. We talking. You know what I'm trying to say? We popping gum. We bringing drinks and stuff all in the sanctuary. In the Old Testament, you couldn't bring that mess into the sanctuary or to the temple, my God. And so when you come off in here, you got to understand this is a holy place. And so therefore, my God, if you're a member of this family and you do it in love, whether you're a guest or not, I'm giving you permission. You can say, hey, excuse me, sister, I'm trying to, I'm trying to focus, but can y'all take that outside? Y'all heard Pastor last Sunday. He said this is a sacred place. And, uh, all that talking and clubbing and kids running around, all that type of stuff. This is a holy place, my God. God is trying to teach us. I say that because the church today, the American church, don't know how to relate and communicate with God. We ain't got no reverence for the house. We ain't got no reverence for the house. The house, my God, is the building and the people. And so we treat this like it's the club. We get up all off in here, my God. We put our feet all up and be squatting all down, all of those stuff. We see stuff on the ground, my God. We won't pick it up. My God, we come in there with drinks and gums and no respect for the temple. The American church. That may be down the street. That can't be at 205. South Sheridan. So God is trying to teach you how to relate to him. For as relating to him too is not just respecting my God the house. But in being able to relate to the holy word of God. Being able to open up the constitution. And begin to allow the word of God to mold you and shape you and put his hands on you. A lot of us don't know how to relate to God. We're not intimate enough with God. We're not intimate enough with God. That's traditional church stuff. That's not praising God. God is trying to get us worship leads to intimacy. When God told Pharaoh through Moses to let my people go, he said that they may worship me. They didn't go from Egypt to freedom. They went to Egypt to wilderness so they can worship them in training. Egypt represents training. Egypt. Re he was trying to teach them how to worship him because they didn't know God at the level at the time. So he, he did pit stop number one and stopped by the wilderness and said, now worship me. Not with just sacrifices. Be intimate. God is beckoning the church in America today to become more intimate with God. And when you get intimate with God, my God, there's some things you got to lay down. There's some attitudes that cannot go. Come on, somebody. Oh, my God. You move from being bitter, my God, to getting better when you get in the presence of the Lord. You know how to release and let go of unforgiveness and stuff. You know how to keep your mouth off the leadership, my God. Come on, somebody. Oh, my God. You learn things when you get intimate with God. Come on, somebody, that you won't learn on the outer court. That's why it's called the temple. You got to learn how to pray through the temple. Out of court. You can do anything in the outer court. That's supposed to be done. But when you get closer and closer and closer to God, you got to die. You got to die. God begin to show you yourself. And so God's trying to teach you how to relate to him. That's why it's called the in-between, my God. The esteems, my God. Because when the children of Israel left Egypt, my God, they didn't know God. And so God said, stop in the wilderness, my God, and worship me because I want to be intimate with you. Oh, God is an intimate God. <laughs> he wants to sit with you. He wants to talk with you. He wants you to love on him. He wants you to tell him. He wants you to tell him how good he is. Oh, you make me feel good. Come on, Tiki. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. God wants you to talk to him like you're talking to your dying piece, baby. He's an intimate God. He's a big guy. He can handle you being ah. He can handle you, my God. Come on, huh? he can handle it. Let me get her. Uh, he can handle it. Talk to him. When the last time you really talked to God? When the last time you really said, God, I love you. I'm not talking about no flesh love. I'm talking about intimate love. God, thank you for being so good to me. Oh, if you don't never do nothing else for me, thank you because you saved my soul, because you delivered me, because you woke me up today. You put a new song in my mind, in my heart. You gave me a new opportunity. You helped me discover my identity. You taught me who I was when I was wasn't fit to live and wasn't ready to die. You showed me who I was. Thank you for being God. Thank you for dying on Calvary. Thank you for taking that beating. Thank you, my God, that you hung between two things. Thank you because you did it all for me. Hey, he couldn't let us die until Brendan. He snatched us out at the right time. Somebody give God some glory in the church. Hey! Do anybody got a reason? If you got a reason, give God some glory. Yeah, it's going hard for Christ over here, baby. In your in-between, in your in-between, in your in-between, God is also trying to, trying to teach you how to draw on his power. He's trying to teach you, see, 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 because our power is in our money. Our power for some women is how you build. 
For some of you men, for some of us men, it's the manipulative spirit. We use it in the wrong context. So, so, so God said, we need to get past that camouflage power. We need to get past that camouflage look. And I want to give you some of this real power. Let me tell you what the power. Power is not this. Listen to me. Hey! That's not power. That's volume. Power is, power is, give me, my, give me my phone. Give me a phone. Give me a phone. Give me a phone. Power is, men and women, my favorite, when he or she called at one in the morning, and you see that, and you just heard this word like this, <laughs> You said, I'm trying to embrace the in-between. So when he called, or uh, she called, or uh, when the man said, I got the best weed, I got some of that good cognac, come on. you see that, and you'll look at that, you'll be like, no, 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 no. I'm going on to see what the end of a same life going to be like. Who the? Okay. Y'all with me? Y'all with me? That's power. Being able to put the flesh. Uh, you ain't got to do it because it asked for it. Uh, you got to turn your back on the flesh. Oh, that's only a few clapping because many of them don't got no power. And anybody got the power in the church. So when the phone rang, Woo, my God. Amen. <laughs> Y'all leave me alone. I'm trying to preach the gospel of this church. <laughs> oh, that spoke. See, that spoke. Huh? So, hey, Tanya, see, that spoke. Huh? Somebody understand. Oh, well, you got to be able to resist the flesh. That's power. Saying no, turning your back on stuff that you really want. <laughs> when you want to cuss them out, you don't cuss them out. When you want to cheat on them, you don't cheat on them. When you want to smoke some good blood, you don't smoke no. That's power. When you want to look at pornography, you don't. That's power. And the church ain't got no. And the church ain't got no worldwide. Oh, y'all go back to all you. Y'all need to set all you on fire over there. Yes, Lord. Also, too, let me give you this. I want to go a little deeper. My God, my God, in the in between. The in between. Listen to me, y'all. I love you. The in-between is God want to also teach you and I. He want to teach you and I, man, about, my God, overcoming trials with his help. There are certain things we are trying to overcome, but it's not designed. Settle down, spirit. It's not designed for you and I to overcome in our own strength. That's when you got to fall over there in the Zechariah. Is it four or six? It's not by my might, nor by my power. But it's by his spirit. See, there's some hangups and habits, addictions, and all that. Addictions, as I teach our angels, draw. There's things that the body is dealing with right now, you and I, that the only way you're going to get free from, the only way you're going to overcome it, you got to do it through Christ. You can't do it through flesh. You can't do it through intellect. You can't even do it through. Who you know and what you know, you got to do it through Christ. He got it designed and set up like that for, 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 for him to defeat it so that he can get the glory. Everything that God does, he wants the glory. He said, let my people go that they may worship me. As I told you, I went to five treatment centers and none of that helped me get free from my addiction. But when God saved me, now he said, okay, all that fire and all that glory that you would have given 12 steps, give it to me. Because he said, I'm a jealous God. I won't show my glory. My God will no thanks. See, God, see, some of you, my God, if God did something for you, you wouldn't give him the glory. You'll give your people who you know it and your job, 401k, and all that. You'll give that the glory. You won't give God the glory. God is a jealous God. And when you intimate with God, you'll understand that God don't want to share his glory, his intimacy with nothing. So anything that you worship more than God, anything you spend more time with than God, you are making God jealous. Oh, yeah. It, it, yeah, yeah. He's a jealous God. That's a sailor moment right there. What do you spend more time doing? But you don't give God that same time. Be careful. I need y'all to understand some write this down. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Listen to me as y'all write. The journey is just more just as important as the destiny. Y'all look at me. Destiny was created, and then he created you for it. But then you got to walk. And walking towards your destiny, there's a whole lot of things that you're going to encounter in life. 
but it's called, my God, you got to embrace. That's why I titled it Embrace the In-Between. It's the in-between that most Christians quit. It's the in-between things, Q, most people give up because they don't understand God's sovereignty. They don't understand God's providence, so they quit. And then most people don't have enough faith to understand that, that this is God. We always quick to blame human and quick to blame the devil for something that is God because we're not intimate enough to know that this is God. Yeah. Our first, my God, thought is to blame man, blame the wife, blame the husband. We don't, and then second usually is, well, the first usually to blame the devil, then the second usually to blame man, and then we don't never say, okay, God, what are you saying? Yeah. When we get into a squeeze, the first thing we want to do is kick and scream. Instead of fast and pray and say, God, what are you saying? God used Joseph's brothers, his own flesh and blood, to execute, listen to me, his will. He used his own flesh and blood. So some of the things that happened to you, can I say this to my ladies? And I'm being real sensitive, but I want you to understand something. Some of you, my God, you got dropped. My fever shelves, you got left. They told you it wasn't nothing. I didn't want you from the start. My God, you got to be able to take that and say, okay, you didn't want me, but God did. Because if God didn't want me, I'd have died. Or I wouldn't be here today if God didn't. I see y'all, 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 y'all. Y'all don't understand it. See, you got to get to the point where you tell yourself, you might have not wanted me, mama, daddy, or whoever. My God, but God wanted me. That's why I'm here today. Now, look at me now. I'm shining. I started from the bottom. Now, I'm here. You said I wasn't going to be nothing, but look at me today, baby. You didn't want me, but God wanted me. See, some of y'all need to receive that. Oh, my she kid, I love my boy. Some of y'all need to receive that. Some of y'all need to receive that because you're still struggling, women and men, but more women than with rejection. With rejection. Come on, Pastor Dean. You're struggling with rejection. But you got to tell yourself that human might have didn't want me. And I know it's painful because it's mama, but God can use mama too. See, 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 see. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I'm out there. See, 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 God needed his family to reject. His dream. Because if they would have received the dream, they would have messed up the plan. See, the plan was him for him to make it to Egypt. See, if I say the plan, baby, was for him to get to Egypt. So if the father would have welcomed him up front, if the brothers would have welcomed him up front, then the plan would have been hindered. It don't mean that God couldn't fulfill it, but it would have been hindered. Hindered. So he needed them to reject him. Ooh, you need somebody to reject you. You need some haters in your life. You need some people to hate you and dislike you and criticize you and talk about you. It's all part of the plan. Who am I talking to? Hey! The journey is just as more important than the destiny. Pastor Dean, the journey is just as more important than the destiny. Oh my God, you know why? Because the journey, you learn things. You learn how to relate to God. You learn who God is. You become intimate. If you didn't have a trial, if you didn't have a situation, you would never come to church. You would never read your Bible. You would never pray. Oh my God, that's why the psalmist said it was good for me that I was afflicted. Oh my God, some, some of y'all, my God, God got his hands on you. He's trying to squeeze you until you say yes. Or oh, he's going to make it uncomfortable in the nest <laughs> until you get up at the nest. <laughs> oh, some of you, you can't serve God from a distance. You got to come closer, my God. He's going to make it uneasy. He's going to stir the water up. He's going to make it very uncomfortable because he's trying to bring you in, baby. Oh, things that's running smooth, don't be cra- uh, Don't flip out when it go chaos. In one moment, you could be on top of the next minute you broke. I can't get nobody to say nothing. You got good credit today and you have bad credit tomorrow. Don't get full of yourself. And it ain't the devil, it's God. The Bible says God took it from Job and gave it all the way back to him. Thank you, Holy. Embracing the in-betweens. This speaks to me because it's my life. There's a whole lot of things. Amen, Toya. There's a whole lot of things me and my wife had to endure. My God, on our way to where we are. I'm not just talking about marriage. I'm talking about in life. Oh, but I thank God. <laughs> That's why I'm like Jake. I never let you make me feel bad because God has blessed my soul. And I'm always giving God the glory. Oh, my soul says yes. Oh, my God is good. Good on this side. Oh, because see, I learned how to suffer. I got all kind of trials going on right now. But I learned how to praise God, Jack, in the midst of everything I'm going through. I learned how to lift my hand. 
I learn how to stay planted. I learn how to stay rooted in the midst of the hell. Oh my God, I said I'm going through hell, but I got a praise down in my soul. I said I'm going through hell, I still got my mind made up. Then I'm going on to see what the end of a saved life going to be like. It ain't no shadow of turning, baby. I'm planted. I'm rooted. I've learned how to suffer, Scooter. I've learned how to go through and hold my pulse. It keeps showing up. It stay on my face. It stay on my knees. It was good for me that I was afflicted. Somebody give God a shout. My God. Ah. Yeah. Mm. Ah. Yeah, yeah. Don't forget that the journey. Don't forget. Don't forget, Pastor, that the journey is just as more important than the destiny. Well, I just didn't arrive in the office of a pastor. There's things I had to go through to get to where I'm at, baby. There's challenges, ups and downs, and highs and lows. Lie don't talk about misunderstood because I don't fit in. Oh my God, I had to. I had to keep walking in the midst of it all, baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some of y'all women understand. If any of y'all kept walking, if any of y'all women ever wanted to give up, but she said, I can't quit. If I quit, my kids going to die. If I quit, I'm... Ah! Oh, my God. Hey, Jesus. Boy, I can tell the saints that can... Hey, oh my God. Hey, my God. I know people express many different ways, but my God. Somebody please stand and give God some glory. Okay, okay. Okay, let's go a little deeper. I'm going to finish point one. I'm going to get out your way. I'm sorry because y'all know I don't cut nothing about no hype. I want to give you some principles, but every now and then, <laughs> I'll think back. <laughs> oh, my God, let me give you some more of these principles to take with you so you can do good battle outside of the church house. Brandon, I said, let me give you some of these good principles so I can give you, so you can do good battle, church, good battle outside of the church house. Yeah, yeah, you need some people to leave. You need some people to hate on. You need, that's all part of the journey. Remember, the journey is just as more important than the destiny. Mm. Joseph brothers, you can see how much control my God the Lord ha has by looking at the actions of people involved in this account. You're looking at the action, Ju Reuben, uh, you look at the account of, uh, 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 of Judah, you look at the account of Pharaoh, and even uh, uh, Potiphar. All of them was in God's control. Even though Joseph was in a horrible situation in the natural, but it wasn't the devil. <laughs> it, even, it wasn't even his brothers. See, some of y'all be like, see, see I, can, I can identify with jo Joseph because my brothers did me the same way. They lied on me. Some of y'all, we have done that. Yeah, we all been through that. That's life. That's life. But I want you to understand some of that pain and bitterness that you got, some of y'all have taken a white chalk, as Bishop Ellis said in one of the stories, and drew a line. He said two ladies got in unforgiveness. Sisters, they lived in the same house, no kids, and they were so bitter. They drew a white chalk in the kitchen, on the couch, in the bedroom, everywhere, and they never ever spoke to each other. Now you may think that, no, nah, ain't nobody done that. I don't know, that's what he said in the book, so I'm just quoting what he said. But can you imagine drawing up? <laughs> I got to get up under you so I can't be sleeping way over there. Sit there and say, you know, and we in the kitchen, my God, we know we come through our kitchen, but I gotta go to the other side, and you come to the other side. Don't you come over here, don't me come over there. That's hell. Yeah. Yeah. Who wants to live like that? Yeah. All because of, of a misunderstanding. Now we so bitter when we get a white piece of chalk and we got chalk separating our own house. If that ain't bondage, I don't know what it is. And some of us right now, oh my God, won't talk to our sisters, won't talk to our brothers, we won't talk to people. My God, we we got white chalk in our life right now. Won't let it go. Ah, that touched me. Won't let it go. You didn't got a white piece of chalk and you got your whole life in white chalk. I'm going to talk to them, but I won't talk to her. I'm going to go here, but I won't go there because she over there. I ain't going to the house, the party because she going. I ain't going over to the barbecue because she over there. He over there. You're living a life with white chalk. But you don't know that that what you have experienced is the journey to the destiny. I'm still there. The journey. Embrace. The in-between. The in-between is the journey. Oh, it's a whole lot of things. 
uh, uh, that, uh, a lot of pain along the way. A lot of misunderstandings and things along the way. Oh, but my God, as I was settling in my spirit and, and formulating my sermon, my God, and reading from Bishop Ellis, my God, he made me understand everything, who about everything that we come out of. We're going to be able to help a whole lot of young pastors, my God. Oh, my God, learn how to stay the course because, see, it's a testimony now. I can't get it. Oh, my God, but it was all part of a, oh, I can hear you now. Like, oh, yeah. oh, my God, but the molding and the shaping, baby. We're going to help somebody, my God. It's a whole lot of young pastors coming our way. God said, I got to go through this, my God, because I got people coming our way that y'all going to have to help, my God. It's all purpose. It was good for me because it's purpose. Come on, somebody. I'm speaking of what belongs to mine. I can't get nobody to say it. As you mean, you got to know how to be a priest, prophet, and king of your home, baby. You want to respect it, but are you a king? I'm going to leave it alone. I'm going to leave it alone. Some of my brothers who I love, y'all give God a hand in this church. I got some real ones up in here. Come on, some of y'all, Vontaze. Y'all give God some glory up in this church, man of God. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we some good men up in there. We working it out. Uh, don't trip. God ain't through with me yet. Just tell him that, me. Mm -hmm. Look over and tell her that. Be careful, though, because you need a place to stay tonight. <laughs> Let's go a little deeper. Let me finish this, and I'm going to get you out of here. But is this helping anybody, though? Let, let, let me, let me, is you getting a better understanding? Is anybody getting a better understanding? Amen, woman of God. Who else is getting a better understanding? I got a destiny, but I got a journey. I got things I got to deal with. I got things I got to go through. But it's all purpose. It's like it's all in a mixing pot. It's all in a mixing pot. You can't get around it. I'm sorry. If I can help you, my God, get around it, I would. But I'm sorry, I can't. There are certain things that I have to, my wife had to, you have to go through. We have to go through. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Let me take you to another level. There are certain things as a church family. Look at me, Pastor Sharon. There are certain things as a church family that the church family have to go through together. That's how we grow. Amen. That's how we grow. See, if I say you go through stuff individual, but you go through stuff together. That's why I say one can put a thousand in flight, two can put ten thousand. That's why you got to know what the Bible say. Oh, my God. I'm sorry. I love y'all. Just trying to help the body. Let me get y'all through this, my God. So, so Joseph's brothers of the Israelite traders and Potiphar were all serving, my God, they were all serving their own selfish interest, though. Joseph's brother, they were jealous of him. So that's why they showed them, throwed them in the pit. The Israelite traders, my God, they wanted a, a good, handsome young man. And then Potiphar said, okay, this man got God all on him. I need him to run this palace because I'm lazy now. I don't want to do nothing. Everything he does, it turns to gold. And so they all had their own selfish reasons. Stay with me now. I'm still with the sermon. Stay with me. You know, they are. See, that's why we got to quit trying to judge everybody's motive. Watch me. Let me balance that because you need to understand people's motives. But I said judge. There's a difference. Because, see, you can try to judge somebody's motive and don't understand it. That's God. Look at the brothers. They sold him because they were jealous. See what I'm trying to say? Potiphar wanted him because God's hand was on his life. You see what I'm trying to say? The Ishmaelites bought him because he was handsome and they said, okay, it's a good slave. He's going to get the job done. All of them had their own selfish reasons. But they don't know that God allowed him to be selfish because he was executing his will. Oh, my God, that's heavy. It's heavy, yeah, yeah, yeah. See, this is real stuff. I told y'all we passed Egypt, baby. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. It's, his brothers wanted to get rid of Joseph and his dreams. Some people want to get rid of you. Just go. You, you, don't you know when you operate in God's power and God's anointing that when you come into the presence of certain people, you make them uncomfortable? Yeah. Don't you know that you and I have the authority as Bishop taught us, my God, to change the atmosphere? Yeah. Don't you know when you walk somewhere, when y'all walk in that school, my God, tomorrow on Tuesday, my God, y'all have the authority to shift the whole classroom, shift the whole campus, my God. Walking in authority. Let the people see something different about y'all. Where y'all been going home for Christ Church? Walking in our authority. You got the authority to shift your home, shift your marriage, shift your children. I got to do Stand up off in the hut. It ain't gonna happen overnight. It ain't gonna happen overnight. You gotta keep going. You gotta keep pushing, baby. Eventually, God gonna shift it because He's making you. Some of us, we ain't got out of our trial because He's trying to teach us long suffering. Some of us, He ain't delivered us from our trial because He's trying to teach us long suffering. Because you're gonna need that on your way to your destiny. So, God gotta allow us to crash, not fall out and do whatever because it's the journey along the way. That, but we help you can't get your destiny without going through the journey, man. You got to pay a price to get a degree. Let me help some of y'all that don't understand. You got to pay a price to really love your wife or your husband. You got to pay a price to stay married. 
Because everything in society is against marriage. We okay with shacking up. But see, marriage means commitment. So that's why God, my God, liken marriage in the natural, my God, to marriage to him. Because, see, God wants you to commit to him. He don't want you to date him. Some of y'all date God. You got to marry God. That's why I've been with mine 32 years because I understand the power of commitment, baby. Hey, quit dating God and marry God. Yeah, 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 yeah. Trials will make you fall in love with him, Brandon. Trials will make you marry God. I'm married to the backslider. Don't, don't date him. Don't come when you want to come. Don't pray when you need him. Don't pray just when you when you want to when you when you need something. God, pray because you love God. Pray because you're committed to God. Oh, you want to spend time with him. See, life has a way, my God, of pulling you in. Remember, God ultimately goes to bring you to him. And so if he gotta squeeze you, if he gotta make the nest uncomfortable. Then that's what he's going to do. Because your destiny is waiting on you. Yes. Everybody said destiny is waiting. Destiny is waiting. Boy, it's a price though. Destiny. It's a price. I'm almost due. I'm almost due, oh my God. While these events, like I said, of Joseph's life appeared to be out of control, they were actually controlled by God. In Genesis 39, 2, God talks about that. I ain't going to mess with it. Genesis 39, 2, you can write that down. But God protected Joseph. What I love about the story, because God protected Joseph from having a bitter spirit. Joseph never got bitter at things he was going through. See, he never, it's amazing because he was a young teenager pastor. And to be sold, put in a pit, jealousy, all this stuff was up close. That makes it even more painful. I can get past stuff if you hate no me and you back there. But if you're up close, if you're up close, it's more painful. Come on, somebody. This is up close trials and tribulations. But he had a powerful dream that he would be second in command. And that was his destiny. My God, he was sitting there second in command. But God never showed him everything along the way. Think about everything this kid had to go through to do what God has called him to do. But everything, see, God, let me help you. I'm back to It's so strategic. Because the type of people that God was, that Joseph was going to be ruling and the nation that he was in, he had to learn different people's languages just like Daniel did. He had to learn and understand culture. Oh my God. He needed to learn how to sit with dignitaries and kings. He needed to learn how to come in and out in the presence of a king. See, these are lessons, thank you Holy Ghost, that he's given me that he had to learn on his way to obtaining his destiny. See, there's things God trying to teach you character. Who, oh my God, to prepare you so you can maintain where he's taking you. I've been praying this week. Pastor Dean, what is that man's name that you told me? Pastor what? What was his name out of Florida? Bentley? Who? Todd Bentley. I read that article on Brother Todd. And it grieved me again. And I'm careful, but that was his name, but I'm careful, but it grieved me. Some of y'all may know, if not Google it, it grieved me. And I told the Lord, whatever you do, Lord, whatever's in me that's going to come out when I get to where you're taking me, start dealing with me now. Start dealing with me right now. Start putting the squeeze on me and letting that stuff that's laying dormant, as the woman of God talked about, let it start surfacing now because when you're taking me, I can't afford to get to this level and all of a sudden I'm exposed, my God, with touching kids and, and, and cheating on my wives, living a double life. See, I don't, I can't, I, 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 I got too much conviction. I'm not above nothing. I said, God, if it's in me, take it out of me. I don't want to hurt your people. I don't want to sin against you. See, that's just the heart of a shepherd. I don't want to get to the platform, my God, and then, my God, my, uh, who I want, who I present is not who I really am. See, what you see with me is what it is, baby. I promise you that. I'm the same on Monday as I'm the same on Sunday. I can't get nobody to say nothing like that. But I told the Lord. See, I'm talking to you because I'm pasting. I'm coming on in. I said, Lord, whatever's in me, my God, that can bring shame on you and on the people, show me and take it out. You got to have that covering, my God. He ain't got no good covering, my God. They was excited about his gift, but they didn't care about his character. Who am I talking to? Oh, my God, they restored that young brother too soon, and he couldn't handle the platform that God had for him, and he didn't hurt thousands of people because they were so worried about his gift. They cared nothing about his character. Woo, take it. Somebody say, take it out, Lord. 
Mm. That's what the in-between is all about. God, my God, I won't finish. God is trying to get that stuff out of you, my God. So when you get there, yes, God knew it. Yes, God knew it. But my God, the people that God sent him to, my God, to set him down and to train him, put him back up too soon. Mm, mm, mm. Mm. It's a reason why Family Especially to my leaders That God is allowing your pastor To see this type of stuff And deal with this stuff In a way it's affecting me Because he see the destiny Of going on for Christ church And as I look around I see what God is doing. God said, don't become the thing you hate. Some of us, I, I, I mean God, I'm through. God, God is, see, 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 Bishop taught me many years, don't become the thing that you hate. The very thing that you criticize other people about, are you doing it now? The very thing, why y'all doing that? Why y'all talking about this? Why now you doing it. When you was young, you said, when I become a mom, I ain't going to never do that. Yeah. <laughs> now you doing it. Yeah. When God blessed me with my dime, I ain't going to never treat her, like, treat her like that, but now you doing it, what uncle did. Yeah. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, it's hard on the yard. It's hard on the yard. Okay. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Y'all pray for y'all pastors. I don't ever want to become the thing that vex me. I don't ever want to hurt you. What you see is what you get. To all these young men and women over there that I just met, this is what it is. I'm not traditional. I'm not a, I didn't come up the customary way. I've been trained. I got oversight. My God, Bishop Gary McIntosh, the founder of Transformation Church, is my spiritual father. He was just here for three hours teaching my leaders on Front Door Seminary this past Sunday. Yesterday, I got covering. I got people in my life. If I get out of order, Bishop comes in and sees this church. It's in the bylaws. I got structure and order because I refuse to hurt God's people. If I'm going to be criticized because I got the heart of a shepherd, my God, and you don't want to be pastor, then it's at the church from you. We pastor over here. We don't preach over here. We pastor the people. God is looking for pastors that got his heart. And if you don't like it, you don't have to be here. I said it with pastor because you are getting pastored over here. You're not getting preached to. I care about your soul. I care about your character. I don't want you to go nowhere where your character can't keep you and then you bring shame on God, shame on your family, shame on your children. I don't ever want my daughter to look at me with disgust as a man, even as a pastor. And if you don't criticize me because I got a heart of Christ, then criticize me. Oh, I don't preach to you. Preach to you, I don't care nothing about you. Pastor to me, I'm involved with you. I want to feel you. I want to know that you're getting better. I want to know that you're getting healthy. I want to know that you're striving to live right. I care about your family. I care about your marriage. I care about your children. Live something. Live something. I teach you everything. Hey! Come on up here. I'm through. I'm squinting on the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost said, that's it. Somebody need to understand that. The pool pit is being mishandled. I revere this. I respect this. I honor this. Oh, my God. I want to talk to some people right quick. Amen. We'll finish up. Did y'all enjoy the word today? Let's give God a hand. Let's not take long. Let's not take long. The Spirit of God is here. Well, every head bow, let's go through the formality. If you know you're not saved, just talk to me. Just if you know you're not saved and you want to give your life to Christ, that means that you have never, ever fully submitted your life to Christ. And you want to do that today because God has said something to you. And you want to be able to, oh my God, to have that intimate relationship with God. If you're looking by way of online and you have never, ever gave your life to Christ, 
and made him not just Savior, but Lord of your life. If that's you this afternoon and you want to give your life to God for the first time, please raise your hand. Anybody. Don't feel ashamed. First time salvations. Meaning that I'm ready to accept Christ. That don't mean that when you accept Christ, you're going to change overnight. But when you accept Christ, we have things in place to help you deal with your now what? Don't be afraid. Any first time salvations. Is that anybody? I see a whole lot of faces that I don't know. With that hand that you're pointing at. Come on down, sister. Bring her down. Bring her down. Bring her down. Bring her down. Anybody else? Anybody else? Anybody else? Your first time ever accepting Christ. My God, if she don't want to come, let her sit there, son. We don't beg nobody to do nothing in this church. My God, if you want to give your life to Christ, you like say, man, you know what? I'm tired. I'm just tired. I'm like that pastor. I had to go to prison the second time, but I said I'm tired. And I threw my hands up, Amber, and I've been going hard ever since April the 30th of 1995. And I've been out of prison since 1998 and never, ever, ever went back to nothing that God has delivered me from. Oh, my God. So I'm excited, and I just love God. And I just cur. I just cur. My wife told me, my God, a couple months ago, she said, you, you want to see everybody set free and delivered because that's what God brought you out of. Don't lose that. Don't lose that. That's just my love for you. Come experience what I'm experiencing. It's good on this side. It's good on this side. God has something in store for you. And I promise you it's much better than where you're at right now. Anybody, anybody, raise your hand. If you feel like you have squandered off some of the life lessons on your way to your journey, your destiny, let me see your hand. Squandered, that means miss, miss, mishandled. Is that anybody? Oh my God, help me, Lord. Come on, y'all. Meaning that you have made some mistakes. You, 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 you have miscalculated some people and you have wrote off some people. You have misjudged some things and you said everything was the devil and, and everything was my mama's fault. It was my daddy's fault. I, I'm bitter. I'm not better. And, and, and you understand now that there were some lessons that I was supposed to learn, my God, that I didn't learn because I messed it off. If that's you, get out your seat and come. Just come. Just come. Just come and everybody kneel. We come into kneel. Intimacy. Don't stand, kneel. If you can, if you can't, I understand. But if you can kneel, come kneel. Come kneel. Come kneel. We got uh, towels, I mean, things to cover you up. Just, I just want to, I just mishandle some things. Uh, I'm real. See, some of us need to come release. Thank you, Holy Ghost. See, you're still holding on to that stuff, my God. Uh, and you won't let it go, my God. So you ought to come release. Release. Release the last husband. Release the baby's daddy. Release. Lay it down. Lay it down. Come embrace. My God, don't let that stuff that you don't want to hold, that you don't want to let go, stop you from reaching your destiny. Oh, I said, don't let that stuff to those that are still sitting in the seat, my God, stop you from reaching your destiny. Oh, my God, that stuff that you don't want to let go. Oh, my God, those situations, those relationships and all that stuff, my God, that you're holding on to. My God, remember that phone call. Oh, my God, that stuff right there. The stuff that you don't want nobody to know. Come. 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 Come and submit. Come and surrender. Pain. Frustration. Suicide. Bring it to the altar. Discouragement. Overwhelmness. Bad attitude. Physical problems, my God. God have need of all of that stuff. Who she can abortion now? Yeah, no she can. Some of us is angry at God. Oh yeah, thank you, Holy Ghost. Some of us is angry at God. Some of us is frustrated with God. If you have any anger, any frustration towards God, you ought to be at the altar. If you're saying, God, why? Why me, God? Why did this happen? Why did my mama do this? Why did my daddy do this? God have you. God have you. God have you. He right there. Why my husband won't love me the way I want to be loved? Why my wife won't love me the way I need to be loved? See, that's you. Yeah, 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 yeah. you with somebody, but your heart is with the last man. You ought to come bring that to the altar. Some of us are in bad relationships, and we know it's bad, but it just got a hold on me, and I won't let go of it. And I know it's bad, but you ought to bring that to the altar. Oh, my God, freedom today. Freedom today. Father God, strengthen these, and even those that remain in their seats, Lord, strengthen them, Lord. Father God, I just thank you, Father God, for this sacred moment to bring us closer, to bring us more intimately into you, Father God. Teach us how to relate. 
I know it's difficult for many to come at this time because they don't know how to relate to you, Father God. So, Father God, I'm just asking, Father God, for those that is at the altar and those that are sitting in their seat, Father God. Oh, my God, that you send your ministering angels, Lord, to encamp around about them, Father God, and send your spirit to penetrate them, Father. Start that inside work, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Help us to do like the woman of God just sung and ministered about. In order for you to come in, we got to give ourselves away. So, Father God, these that are at the altar, Father God, who has responded to your voice through me today, Father God, they have come to surrender. They have come to ask for forgiveness, Father God, for mishandling, Father God, the lessons along the way, Father God. Oh, my God, give them strength for the journey. Ah. Help them, Father God, going forward to begin to reposition themselves and begin to embrace the in-betweens, Father God, on their way to their destiny, Father. Father God, I thank you for Bishop Ellis. I can imagine the things that the men of God had to go through, Father God, to be able to birth such revelation, Father God. I speak blessings upon him, his family, as well as his ministry, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord. Lord, I pray that you strengthen his body as we go from this place. I pray your angelic heads of protection be placed around each and every man, woman, and child. I pray that when they go to their family functions and so forth, Lord, that they go with the power of your authority. Oh, my God, that they remember that they have the power to affect the environment instead of the environment affecting them. Give them the power internally, Father God, to resist the lust of the flesh. Ah, don't let them get involved in things that they should not be involved in. Oh, my God, give them the power to resist everything that would bring contamination against their witness and against their life, Father God. Everything that the enemy would try to use to destroy them, Father God, from having influence on their loved ones, families, and relatives, Father God. Help them to restrain themselves in the midst of their families and loved ones. Don't let them give in to things that they know that is displeasing to you, Father God. Lord, I thank you for the congregation. Thank you for what you said. And as I stand before my men and women of God, Lord, I pray, Lord, that you forgive me, Lawrence David Peoples, for anything that I may have said, anything that I may have done that was against your will. Have mercy on me, Father God. I'm working mine out just like they're working theirs out, Father. But I thank you for blessing me with such wonderful people. As me and my wife stand, Father God, it's an honor. Oh, my God, it's an honor. Thank you for even the life lessons that we have learned along the way. Thank you even for our journey, Father God, that many of them would have quit on, Lord. But we stood the test because it wasn't by our might nor by our power, but it's by your spirit. I thank you for the love that my wife has for me, Lord. Thank you for fusing us together. Thank you, Father God, for blessing me as a young man. I met my wife, God, when I was 17. You gave her to me. And now I'm 49 years old, Father God, and we have outlast the storm. And Lord, I give you the glory for my family. Touch my children. Touch everything under the sound of my voice. Strengthen, Father God, each and every marriage, Father God, as you prepare me and my wife to be able to teach these marriage couples, Father God, that we have in this ministry. Father God, strengthen, my God, my single women, Father God, who is keeping themselves and fighting and resisting, Father God, the temptation to sin against themselves as well as you, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Bless the young men and women of God from the ORU school, Father God. Give them power, Father God, in the midnight hour to resist anything that they know that if somebody found out it would bring shame on their life Father God I pray that you break every stronghold break and destroy every yoke bind up every witch bind up every warlock and every demon Father God I understand my God the spiritual warfare that is associated with this church Father God because you call this church to be effective Father God so I thank you that we are to you being effective Lord snatch every one of them out in the name of Jesus give us a new mind and give us a new heart Father God so that we may fully obey you in every area of our life in Jesus holy precious name we pray come on and say amen everybody let's give God a hand oh my God come on give God a hand give God a hand